la diffusion du film « Far Away, My Shadow Wandered » vient d'avoir lieu sur Canal Réel, la plateforme de diffusion de cette 43e édition du Festival Cinéma du Réel. Que vous ayez été spectateur ou non de cette séance, vous êtes les bienvenus pour suivre cette conversation organisée par la Bulac, euh, qui permettra à deux personnalités du monde universitaire, Jean-Michel Butel et Célia Scherfa, de poser leurs questions aux, ré aux réalisateurs du film, Liao Jekai et Soudi Liao. Toute l'équipe de la Bulac vous remercie d'être présent avec nous aujourd'hui à cette conversation. Alors je vais tout d'abord présenter, euh, vous présenter chacun brièvement à nos spectateurs avant de, la laisser, avant de laisser la conversation filer entre vous. I will uh, briefly introduce each of you to our viewers before letting the conversation uh, flow between you. Uh, I start with Liao Jekai. Je commence par Liao Jekai, le réalisateur. Donc Liao Jekai est un cinéaste de Singapour basé à Tokyo. Il a à son actif la réalisation de plusieurs longs et courts métrages, très souvent sélectionnés et primés dans les festivals internationaux, et qui ont été produits entre autres avec le collectif 13 Little Pictures, euh, dont il est un membre fondateur. Ces films explorent souvent l'histoire cachée des lieux, dessinant la relation entre les personnes et l'endroit où ils vivent, leur passé et leur présent. Euh, Liao Jekai est également artiste visuel et œuvre aussi dans le domaine de l'enseignement. Euh, il a il a contribué à créer le département cinéma de l'École des Arts de Singapour. Euh, Soudi Liao, maintenant, elle est co-réalisatrice du film. Elle est danseuse et chorégraphe, diplômée de la Hong Kong Academy of Performing Arts. Son expérience artistique est vaste, d'une part, puisqu'elle a travaillé avec un large éventail de chorégraphes internationaux, mais également car ses œuvres comprennent des performances de diverses formes dans les théâtres, les galeries, les musées et d'autres lieux moins conventionnels. Elle fait aussi des œuvres vidéo et elle enseigne également la danse. Pour leur poser des questions, nous avons fait appel à deux, deux universitaires. Tout d'abord, Jean-Michel Butel, vous êtes japonisant et ethnologue, maître de conférence à l'Institut national des langues et civilisations orientales. Un axe fort de votre activité de chercheur est de vous intéresser à l'évolution de la famille euh, japonaise, au couple, aux sentiments amoureux, et d'une manière plus générale, à comment est perçue la notion de lien entre êtres humains au Japon. À côté de vous est présente Célia Scherfa. Euh, Célia, vous êtes étudiante en master de sociologie à l'EHESS. Votre mémoire de master porte sur le phénomène des ikikomori, euh, terme japonais qui désigne les individus qui préfèrent vivre reclus euh, plutôt que d'affronter les, les affres de la société contemporaine. Euh, un phénomène en lien avec les thématiques de solitude, d'errance et plus largement d'évolution du rapport à la famille qui s'instaure chez les jeunes japonais, des thématiques auxquelles le film nous confronte également. Donc je vais maintenant passer la parole à Celia Scherfa pour entamer la conversation. Liao Jekai, Sudi Liao, many thanks to be here with us. I will now give the floor to Celia Scherfa. Uh, to start the conversation, have a nice chat, please. So thank you, uh, Maxime, for this great introduction. So thank you for all of you to be here with us and for this great opportunity to meet you and talk about this beautiful movie uh, you've done together. So maybe I have a qu first question for you, which is, can you explain the genesis of the movie and how both of you came to collaborate together? Okay, um, maybe let me start. Um, so Sudi and I were, uh, we met in a platform called Sydney Movement, which is the... Uh, Excusez-moi, il y a Singapore. beaucoup je pense qu'il faudrait que Juliette coupe son micro pour pas qu'il y ait de, un retour. Yeah, de... I'm actually hearing kind of echoes too, so... Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. That, that's that's better, I think. Okay, let me continue, sorry. So um, basically, Sudi and I met at this platform called uh, Sydney Movement, and that's 2015, I think. And uh, it's a platform that brings together dancers and filmmakers to develop and make films together. Yeah. So uh, we, that lab, that particular Sydney Movement lab that we met was in Hanoi. We had another lab we joined in Hong Kong, and that was when we started to explore this possibility of working together on a dance film project. 
And um, I think that we spent a few years not really working on a specific project, but really just kind of getting to know, understand each other's practice. And, um, and then about the time 2016, 2017, uh, I, I sort of then, uh, I mean, I had an encounter in Japan with, uh, with uh, Dunya, the protagonist of this film. And that was when uh, I initiated uh, this him as a subject, you know, for our project together. Yeah. Maybe, Sudi, is there something you'd like to add to that? Yeah, so I think what Jake I said was, yeah, when we first met, we didn't do much. We, there wasn't a project that we were, we have to do this. So we took a while to figure out each other's uh, mediums, like dance and film, because we had a hard time trying to put that together, like what exactly is a dance film documentary about. So when Jack I proposed this idea of his um, encounter with Junior, um, what uh, what how does it interest me was that that special intimacy, and then because uh, Jack, do you want to go the storyline or do I? Maybe before we have, I think wait first. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I was very intrigued with that that kind of intimacy. It's just so sudden. Um, that kind of encounter. So that's what what I, I thought was very interesting that I was I was willing to try to explore with together with Jiankai. Yeah. And one more question about this. So you speak about this encounter with there is Yunya, there is Sarah, there is you, and there is uh, you, uh, Jiankai. Sorry for my pronunciation. And how did this work together um, enrich? your work as a choreographer and as a director? Um, okay, I mean, I, I think that, uh, I mean, okay, maybe just let me el elaborate a little bit the context. Uh, we, made, we made this film with a very, very small team. It's just me, Sudi, Sarah, and also uh, a cameraman. His name is Sean. So it's just the four of us. We went, we traveled to Noto to uh to make this movie with uh, with junior so a bit of a background sarah is actually a, a dancer who's based in brussels i, I met her in uh, also in one of the cine movement labs that was in held in macau like cine movement have this uh, this dance film labs that were taking place in different parts of asia so i met her in macau and i invited her to uh uh, to to join us on this on this project as a dancer, so uh, I think primarily for me, uh, um, I mean although I think that, I, I, um, I think I I'm trying I think it it was quite exploratory you know this process of making this film in the sense that Sudi and I had to kind of like uh, put together our, our because I think within film and within dance there are certain you know, kind of like a framework in which we, we produce uh, our, our, our individual arts. But, uh, but when we come together, we sort of have to remove that framework and actually kind of like look more deeply into what each other's practice is uh, and, to, and to figure out like a, a new way to collaborate. You know, I, I think that that, is, uh, that that was the most challenging uh, aspect. For me, because you know, I, I I tend to have maybe certain assumptions about how to work with a dancer, and maybe uh, Sudi might have some about about film, and we are always kind of uh, second guessing each other and trying to figure out a way to make this work. So uh, I think that was a particularly challenging uh, aspect. Yeah, maybe Sudi, would you like to? Yeah, I agree on like how the two forms have to come in together. It was challenging because um. It is like a like a marriage between two different forms because we don't know each other's form as well. Like some things that I was used to it, and then I'm not sure of the film which he would help. So it kind of like blending together, and the way we work was very spontaneous. I must say, like there wasn't a very straight like a choreography set choreography. There wasn't very like set um story storyboard or anything like that. A lot of it was um, a lot of improvisation, a lot of workshop. Like the, our team was very small, so the four of us like we spent a lot of time discussing 
we had everyone's opinions and feedback after the end of the day. So I thought this was quite an open way to collaborate. Like we, we just put everything out and then we talked about it at the end of the day. It was very different from how I used to work and probably Jekai as well. Yeah. yeah, I mean, maybe just to sum it up, I think for me, dance, you know, this this film, I mean, I, I will go talk more about Junya later, but I mean, uh, mm. this this film is about Junya's uh, relationship with, with a place. It's actually a very simple theme. It's a young man's re- kind of love-hate relationship with uh, with a particular land with his, and kind of involving his family, kind of involving uh, certain certain places, you know, that, that means, uh, and they're meaning to him. And the medium to represent, you know, this this really rich and deep emotions is dance. Yeah, so I, so basically that's, that's how, uh, that's our main sort of trajectory that we are exploring yeah, in this film. And uh, okay. Sorry, you wanted to say something, maybe. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, that's interesting because when I saw the movie, I felt that the work, the improvisation of Sarah was really of a great importance. And uh, what is also interesting is that the camera sometimes is. There is a fascination of the way uh, the camera is capturing the movement. So as a dancer and as a choreographer, Sudi, uh, how mm-hmm. the, do you feel and do you think this collaboration with the cinema, with the camera and with all of the set, which is sometimes, uh, which was sometimes shot in really extreme conditions, helped you have um, maybe a different feedback on what the movement and what the dance means and is? Yeah, I think um, what the dance factor came in was it acted like the movement acted like a metaphor to how you describe the emotions of um, how uh, Sarah is feeling at the very point because the weather in Noto was very harsh and some outdoor scenes you saw it was like it was real. <laughs> Nothing was like acting or anything. So I think what Sarah did as a dancer, she was very mature and she was very sensitive to the, 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 the actual scene, the whole scenario. She just allowed her body to react and respond to the, the nature. And I thought that was very, uh, how do I put it? Like honest in that point of time, like she, she just reacted to the scene, the, the nature. The harsh nature, right? So, what um, we thought was using to use Sarah's movement to recreate certain memories that Junya shared with us through his stories. Yeah. Maybe Jean Michel, you want to say something about this? Well, well, yeah, it's very interesting because um, I think J.K. you wrote somewhere that uh, the story of a film is not so much about the red carpet, but about friends coming together to make a film. I think you wrote something like that. And I love yes, this yes. idea and I really felt it in a, in this movie. Like uh, a lot of respect, a lot of friendship and intimacy between two people, ma- a man, a woman, and two maybe different, different, different uh, cultural background because one is uh, more international, able to speak English, the other one is not so much and so mm-hmm. And I would like to know how you could make and how does it work between uh, Junior and Sarah? Because they didn't know each other before the film, I guess. Okay. Um, yeah. So I think what was really interesting for me is that Sarah is actually a very modern, very modern. I mean, she lives in a city, in a, in a, in a big city, and and I think even her her improvisation, her dance is very modern in in a sense that there is some kind of like a contrast, you know, with with the sort of uh with the place itself that is sort of like a very countryside that's very uh like a backwater and where the people i mean, had to deal with these elements and as well as these different you know uh i mean they were very traditional in the set in the way they they handle and they treat religion um so so there is a really big contrast and actually sarah well i have to i, I think that she wasn't comfortable actually 
with uh with being there. And and I think that that discomfort, uh, it's I mean, it's interesting as a comparison to how Junya also felt this sense of discomfort towards this this homeland. You know, that is supposed to where he's he had this really strong uh, relationship with, but at the same time, there were also some, a lot of very heartbreaking sort of uh, things, you know, about this place. So so I think I think that is the sort of synergy that the, the two share with each other. And I think when they came together, you know, many things that you see in the movie sort of uh, happened naturally. Like the, the like the, the, the scene in the cafe when they, they they spoke about having the same birthday. That was a uh, I mean, I wasn't expecting this at, at all. I think as, as a filmmaker, I was really, I mean, I place these characters, I give them a context, you know, and I, I just watch what happens. And and for me, it's like, I really just hiding behind the camera and just just watching, you know, uh, how how they communicate with each other, how, you know, Junya opens up and starts sharing, you know, things with, with us, with, with Sarah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean that that's that's why what, what I feel about you know how. I mean, I think Sarah at the end at the after we made the film, I think when she left, when she finally when I was leaving Japan with her, I mean she still said that I mean she's not totally comfortable with with especially maybe the more traditional aspect of Japanese culture. I think she as someone that's really forward thinking and really contemporary could not comprehend certain aspects of the culture. But but I think I think she, I think what she left there and what she did is very real to her experience you know, of that moment. Yeah. And I also would like to add on like because Junya and Sarah, they had this idea of homecoming. Although it's a different way, but because Sarah is Singaporean, but she's been away from Singapore for like ten over years. Right, it's ten, more than ten years. Yeah, so, so yeah, she left Singapore. Uh, I think after high, maybe in the before high school, and she was she never came back. Yeah, so even as a dancer, people in this dance scene in Singapore actually don't know her or her work. Actually, yeah. Okay, so, sorry, sorry to interrupt. So you can, yeah. No, no, yeah. So I thought with this homecoming thread, they had this parallel together. So all those are different sensation for each both of them but they had something similar <laughs> yeah may i ask something uh, it's more about the process of the film but uh, um you okay. two are from singapore right and um sarah is from singapore but uh, she's in brussels you met her in macau you have you had the idea of the film in uh, in hanoi oh right and uh, we, yes. we, we, I mean, we first start developing this project in Hong Kong, although we met in Hanoi. <laughs> okay. Yes. And finally, you decided to put the, the to, to make the film in Japan. So I wanted to know yes. a little bit more about that. What does represent Japan for you? Um, and why, why Japan more than, I don't know, Taiwan, Thailand or Singapore? Okay. Um... I mean, I, I, I went to, I mean, I had, I have a interest, I think, in Japanese culture and Japanese cinema, which is why, I mean, I, I went there on a personal trip to Notohanto. I went to Notohanto because, uh, I, I mean, I, I want, it, it was kind of like, I, well, like a holiday and traveling for me. And I picked that place because, uh, I really like, uh, the Japanese uh, director, Kori Da Hirokazu's first movie, Maboroshi no Hikari, which was, uh, shot in Noto. So I, I didn't know anything about the place besides these images I saw in this movie that really, uh, kind of, for me, a really powerful portrayal of this seaside village. So I wanted to see it for myself. And that's how I found myself traveling there alone. And that it was where I actually met Junior. So uh, I, I met him in a guest house. We were both living in the same guest house. And there was just one day when he, he offered to bring me to his family shrine. I went with him and then he showed me, he performed this Shinto ritual. Uh, I think really purely as a gesture of friendship. You know, he was doing it with like, 
home clothes in a completely casual setting as opposed to, you know, his the kind of priest robes that he might be wearing. So, but but it was, it really kind of left a, a deep impact on me because because I, I saw, I think, uh, a, a, one, a side of him that he doesn't show to people, which is his, his relationship with this drawing. And 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 all the family entanglement around this uh, around this shrine. So um, so I when I came back, I think I then proposed to Sudi to 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 make this project. I mean, I think that it naturally became that I kind of felt that I had to make a a movie about him, which is why I mean, although we met. <laughs> in Hanoi, developed in Hong Kong, but it came down to Japan in the end. And I think Sudi also, uh, after I I told her about my encounter with Junya, she went to uh, Noto on her own to meet Junya. So maybe Sudi, you, you want to... You yeah, want to um, <laughs> when Jie Kai yeah. showed, talked to me, tell, told me about uh, his encounter with um, Junya, he told me about the Shinto ritual, which I was very interested in the whole it's, it's very it's, it's very choreographed the steps i mean the, the way he he steps and everything and i was very interested in the sound score of the the shinto ritual so that i was like oh wow like i i held on to that but i went i went all the way to um noto by myself he, oh, he didn't show me the ritual <laughs> so i was like okay never mind like but i met junior as a person as a character i thought he was very he was like a very shy he was not so open the first time so it took me a while until even when we went the second time, it took a while before he slowly opened up to us. Mm. So I think he's just quite a reserved person. And the fact that he, he's so reserved and he can show, I mean, he can like present the ritual to Jekka, I thought that was a, a very warm gesture. That's why we also used the, Jekka used the film camera for him to, to maybe express himself through images or like places that can evoke some memories from his childhood. So I think that was quite, uh, that's what I got from Junya, like a very, like a very kind hearted, but reserved young man. Yeah. But I think the solo trip on my own, sorry, <laughs> the solo trip on my own really helped me see Noto very differently because that's my first time in Noto. And like driving through all that, that um, the drive there was beautiful. Driving through the seaside and everything, just slowly had this image of a film like, oh, okay, I'm going somewhere, but I don't know where I'm going yet. <laughs> kind of feeling. <laughs> yeah. I, I was surprised how, how much he played naturally. I really felt that uh, he's just living like that and uh, he's not an actor, he's just moving like that but how could you make him at his be uh, in front of the camera because usually people should be shy in front of the camera and don't know how to move and so on no i think it helped that we are very we are a very small team you know that we are all kind of friends we became friends with him and he became comfortable with us uh, i think one of the first things that we did in the film is to do an interview with him a little bit I mean you didn't see any of the footage in that film but some of the some of his voiceover I think only a, a few of the voiceover that remained in the film were from the interview um, when uh, I think that was kind of like trying to warm him up to the camera and then after that uh, I mean I think I think that he he slowly get, get used to expressing I think himself and he wasn't he wasn't kind of like as shy as we thought. Although he, it took him a while to really kind of say things that are really deep inside him. I think there are a lot of uh, at first it was quite it was more casual, you know, like for example the scenes in the cafe, you know, like a more like a friends, you know. But some of the things that he say when he was driving, you know, it was it was something that you know, it will take it takes time before he really. Uh, he really decides that he wants to share some of these emotions with us. It was, it was, yeah. And we can feel it through his Japanese. His Japanese is different. In the coffee, it's very natural, and in the car, he's mm. 
is talking to someone, right? And uh, you can feel it through yes. his language. Yeah. But the scene in the coffee shop is really marvelous. I, I, I thought, oh, I know this coffee shop. I've been there already. And uh, I know this guy, you know, it's so natural. Uh, you, really, you, you feel like you know the, the people here. Mm. Yeah, I, I think that one of the, I mean, even when I was doing location scouting by myself uh, in, in Notohanto, uh, I I, th I think I really felt this really, I think we, we were given a lot by the local people. You know, like, for example, in the cafe, uh, uh, the owner, Rocky, the owner of the cafe, who was making the coffee and talking with us, sharing with us his sailor, his life as a sailor. Um, he was, um, I mean, I, I knew him because I stayed in his, he also runs a guest house and I stayed with him for a few nights. And, and you know, we had we had drinks every single night and he would tell me a lot of stories about himself. And and when I asked if I can, you know, film him in the his cafe, he was totally fine with it. Even when there are there are other customers uh in, in, in it. And he even if you remember the boat ride uh in the film, we were on a boat. It was a it was an offer from Rocky. You know, Rocky told us that uh he would like to show us Noto from the sea. So he said, Would you like to go for a boat ride? I can take you on a boat ride. And so it wasn't something that we planned, but because he offered it, we are like, uh, yeah, sure, let's let let's uh, let let's go ahead. And then when we when we get on the boat, he asked us, so where do you want to go? You know, you want me to just go one round around like sightseeing and stuff. And then I I I, I at that time I knew that there was only one place we need to go, which is Junya's uh, uh, home, Anamizu. So we. Although we already shot a scene where we drove there, and I thought, okay, let's just do the same trip again, but on a boat. Yeah, it will be, it's like a completely different thing, I think, for Junya. So we took the boat to Anamizu. Yeah. So, um, yeah, sorry. It was really a performative process, right? You you just make the film like it came, I, I guess. Yeah, it was, uh, there, there was nothing really, really planned. Uh, Although I think that we the more planned bits are maybe the the performance, the dance when you know like the dance in the house when uh with Sarah, that took a few days. Like we we shot there one day and then we were not satisfied. We came we went back to do it again and again. But there are other parts of the film like on the boat where uh, it was really spontaneous because the boat trip. I mean I didn't know what we are where we are going <laughs> when we step onto that boat. You know. Um, so I, you know, I plant microphones on some, some, some of the key characters like Junya and Rocky and Tomohiro and Sarah, and then uh, I just moved around with the, my cameraman to to shoot to document that experience. Yeah, very much an observer, I think, in this entire story. Yeah, and. I have also a question about uh, Junya's photographies because the movie is also structured around the, those. And was it um, your ideas or Junya's ideas of showing his uh, childhood photographies and childhood memories? I mean, that, that was... Uh, I, I mean, the, the device of the camera was something that we gave him. I mean, I I thought that I need to be able to see things through his eyes. So I gave him a camera and I say, uh, I told that I told him to, whenever he sees something that meaningful to him, uh, please just snap a picture. And then he he really took onto it, and then he he was taking pictures like uh, all the time, and 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 I think he knew what we are trying to do. Uh, he knew that we are trying to make a film about his relationship with the place. So he very naturally started taking really a lot of images of places that mean something to him. So it, it wasn't even something that I, I specifically told, tell him to do. Um, in terms of uh, his memories, um, I think we got a lot of his memories from the very initial interview that we did with him, where he shared, he really shared a lot with us. Um, so, so we we sort of knew that 
you know that there's this train station that was being abandoned that that uh we know about his house you know that, that there's this the, the, the house that we shot in he, he nobody lived in there for 20 for over 20 years although it was right beside the shrine so it was completely uh dilapidated but i knew that this is the place where he grew up as a kid so it, it's something very important to him you know and actually after after we made the film a year later his father sent me a message on facebook junya's father and he told me that you know uh the, the house is no longer there they they tore it down so uh he said that i i mean it's great that you made this film because <laughs> it was a, it was the only record now they have of, of the of what's inside the house so uh i, I think I mean, I think I think that that is part of I think the meaning and the power of I think the cinema. I guess it plays a record, you know, a, a time stamp, you know, on places, and and we know that the world is always is really changing all the time, you know. I think it's not just a, a time stamp of of a place, but also also of a person. Like today, Julia is a different person than he is when we made the film. In fact, when we were editing the film, I felt that we were still missing something, you know that. So I actually went back to Noto just a year ago. Uh, by my, I mean, Sudi didn't go this time because because uh, we didn't have a budget to bring her on this trip. Yeah, so I I mean I was living in Japan at the time, so I just went down there. And I I, I was wondering whether I can shoot something more junior, but when I got there, I realized I couldn't shoot anything because he is completely different from who he is at that time so anything that i shoot will be a new project it will not make sense actually for this film junya himself keep telling me that you know he's different now <laughs> yeah that the film really is a time stamp you know on a particular moment at, at a time of his life yeah so yeah that was my very long winded answer <laughs> yeah. but about the camera the last last picture i took it's not a picture of his memory. It's a picture of the lady who is dancing, right? So did you decide that, or did you, did you did it by yourself? Okay. Uh, actually, yes. That that photograph is more. Uh, is 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 more of. A, I I I ask him to do that. <laughs> yeah. There, there are some, maybe some scenes that are a little bit more 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 staged in that sense. So so in that in that particular scene, uh, I mean, I I told him to. Oh, actually, okay, I re I remember now. He wasn't taking a picture of Sarah, actually. It was a cinematic editing trick. He was actually taking a, a picture of me and the cameraman. Because he, he faced the cam camera and, and he took the picture. That was of me and the I was recording the sound. So I was holding the microphone and the sound man, the, 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 the cameraman was on the, on the camera. And I... Using an editing, I connected, you know, Sarah and Junya. They were both at the same seaside at during a bad weather day, but it was actually filmed on two different days. So actually, th this encounter between the two of them was created in in editing. Yeah. So. Because I thought it was very really meaningful that uh, he finally took the picture of uh, his memory in the in the way it's danced. Not only in, mm. in place, yeah. The the lady was in. I mean, yeah. Sarah was expressing his memory better than the place itself, and uh, I thought it was very meaningful. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> that was that was. Uh, I gave away <laughs> how we did it, but uh, yeah. But Junior was with us most of the time, even when even when uh, Sarah was just. We are just filming her, her dance scenes. And you know when I was editing the film, I I felt very strongly that we need to draw this stronger connection. I think between Junya and and Sarah's dance because it was also how he how he observed how he looked. So if you look at this this expression of these emotions, so if you remember in the scene in the house, you know there was a, when Sarah was uh, creating this improvisation, we cut to a, a close up of Junya's face you know him looking but it was actually the close-up was taken from a different scene but i felt that we need to 
create this tighter connection. <laughs> I guess, uh, you know, not so truthful <laughs> elements, uh, you know, as a filmmaker, we sort of resort to certain devices, but yeah. You see, you seem to be unhappy about that, but this is your job, no? Not to, to make something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, does I it mean, mean we, that... sorry, I mean, we wish that it was a real also. That, he, that we can capture his gaze and that the truth behind that moment. But sometimes when we, when we don't have the material, we just have to, you know, connect things. Yeah. But does you mean, does you mean, do, do you mean that uh, your job as a, as a Kontoku is just to take the moment and uh, not to, not to induce it or? Uh, no, no, I don't mean that. I mean, I, I mean that of course, uh, in the ideal world, we will, I'll, I mean, I would have, I mean, filming is what it is, I think. I mean, because I think that there is, there is certain power in honesty. Although I think in cinema, we create a different kind of truth when we edit, mm. right? Sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. Yeah. And as Sarah told you after the movie, how she felt with, um, with this movie because she 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 penetrates the and she re she interprets the memories of Junya in a very raw way with her movements sometimes improvisation sometimes choreography and how this movie helped her grow as a dancer and maybe as a person simply Well, I don't think I can speak for her, but I think for the movement part of the, the, the film, we we try to use her her body as a, like a vessel. To, instead of voiceovers so much of, I mean, instead of so much voiceovers, we thought we can, you could use the movement as a more abstract way to translate the, what, what we wanted to portray. So, so we use, so as a dancer, I, I'm not, I, I should not, I, I don't know, I, I don't know how to say it for her. But I think it's going to unlock something, unlock something for her because she, yeah, I, I can feel it was very difficult for her to, to be in that kind of um, quite restrictive culture. <laughs> and also like there was one, um, that one day that um, we went out in the weather was really really bad. Remember that day, Jekai? It was but the last think, scene in the film. Yeah. Yeah. For that, I think that for her as a dancer was very challenging. I don't know. I don't know how challenging for her, but I think that was one of the most, I would say, dangerous part of the film as well. And as for her, uh, yeah, we felt really like to put her there in the that that kind of crazy weather. Yeah, we, we, we did kind of feel like oh, a little although, heart wrenching. The, the the camera did made it seem a lot more dangerous than it actually is. I have to, yeah. I have to say, I mean, she was actually quite quite a bit of a distance away from the wave, but because of the lens that we use, compress it compressed the distance, so it seems like she, the waves are gonna like come on the yes. <laughs> at any time. Yeah, but, but um, yeah, sorry. Sorry, I mean, I mean, as a dancer, Sarah usually is in the theaters, like, you know, never, I don't know if she did outdoor stuff, but not like this kind of crazy weather. So, I, I mean, I think that was a very challenging role, especially, and it was really cold. So for a dancer to keep your body warm and well um, maintained in that kind of weather, it's very challenging. Yeah. Yeah. Are Actually, Sudi friends, mentioned, or? I think, one good point. Yeah, sorry. No, we are we are still friends. No, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean Su Sudi mentioned I think that the, the 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 part about I think dancers when they move they need their their muscles need to be warmed up. Uh, Sarah spends the first hour and a half of every day just warming up. We were all staying in the same room, and she will wake up earlier than any one of us, and she will do stretching by herself in the dark. You know, which is how that scene came about when she was uh, stretching that was actually our bedroom and she does it every day until a point when i said Let let's film this <laughs> let's film you doing this because it became such a ritual you know 
uh, that I, I thought it has some meaning uh, to the film. Um, but maybe I just want to add, I think from a filmmaker's, having worked with the dancers, I think, whether it's Sudi or uh, Sarah and his project, uh, I think that it was really, I think the challenge was to, to, was to respect a certain flow and continuity in movement and in dance, which is not easy, you know, when we make films, because, you know, when we make films, we have uh, many shots, right, in, in one scene. And we, we, take, we want to take the same thing from different angles to, to, to advance the story or show something more about the character. But when you film a dancer, they, they cannot just repeat or stop especially improvisation because every single improvisation is different so so it was hard for her to repeat or hard for her to stop you know if i say cut doesn't mean that she had to stop in a movement it, it's something that is very i think for from a dancer's perspective maybe sudi can can attest to that or you can mention that I, i'm not i'm not sure but I, I i don't think it's a it's something that they like so for us we we I try to accommodate that by not having, uh, not breaking the the momentum of the of the movement. So, for example, in the first scene in the cave, everything was done in the one single take, meaning that even when you see the different shots from different angles, I never cut. So me and the, my cameraman were just moving the camera all the time. If if we want to take from different angle, we don't cut. We just move. So we miss on some some parts, but that is kind of inevitable. I we just didn't want to stop uh, what she was doing, and and the same same case with the last scene, you know, in that really bad weather, where we she just had a really a go at a really long, really really long take, twenty minutes, I think about, and we just film it in its entirety so that we don't kind of disrupt a certain momentum, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can add on on the dance part because like this film is not like you can work in the studio. Okay, you have this four eights to dance in the space. It was very different. It's not like even if I set the movement or anything, the rocks are different. Like, so there's so many um uncertainties. So we just thought like, you know, let's just not set because it, it's very time consuming to and it didn't really make sense for this film. So b before every run, it was just Sarah. We just like tell, give her some like key points. Like, okay, let's try this with this theme, and then she goes. And then for her, she she needs time to get into that certain state. She's not ready. Action go. <laughs> she needs time to. So we get we gave her time to slowly get into it, stay in the moment with her, and then it's quite a long process. So every shot, like Jake, I say, is like at least twenty minutes, and. Yeah, I understand like for dancers, if you want to um, do the same thing over and over again, it's also physically very tiring. And to add on with the harsh weather conditions outside, it was just almost impossible to recreate the same shot. So for us, it was just like, okay, let's try one shot. Let's. So every shot, we just keep rolling. Yeah. So, so what about the dance in the, in the house? Because you, you told us that uh, you need several days to make it, right? So oh yeah, that was how did you work? Angle. How did you work on it? Uh, the dance in the house was one of the first dance uh, sequences that we shot actually uh, in this film, which is why uh, I mean it, it was very much ex the the first the first shot that we did. I wasn't even looking at the camera because because uh, because Sarah told me that she doesn't know what where she will go in the house. She's just going to move and improvise. So I'm like, okay, so I cannot be behind the camera because I might just appear in the camera if she turns around and the camera turns as well. And, and also because of the sound. So uh, so me and Sudi were actually outside the house and the cameraman went in with her and they, they, they spent like half an hour inside there. And we were like, what's happening in there? Uh, and then they came out, and then uh, and then at time it was kind of getting dark, so we thought let's let's uh, let's uh, let's watch the footage first. So we went home. We saw I I saw what uh, what they shot, and then I proposed you know certain aspects of the. I think that that Sudi mentioned earlier that there's there's one thing that we did every single day. We meet uh, after dinner every evening, 
to just look at all the rushes. So everybody does it. Me, Sarah, Sudi, and the cameraman, except Junya. Junya didn't watch because he has to go to work. He works in the Izakaya, <laughs> so, uh, which opens at night. So actually, he was the most tired person in the whole shoot because we finished shooting in the day and then he goes to work at night. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so we, we had this session where we will discuss uh, what we shot. And I think that's how we, we reworked that same scene over and over again uh, over a few days. And that what that makes it a little bit, I think, different from some of the scenes that the dance sequences that we did in, in the in outside, outdoors in nature. Yeah. Can you talk a little about the musicality of the film? Because there's this beautiful scene where Sarah is stretching at night, I think, and over men knock at the door and join her in her stretching. Uh, process and the, ol the only sounds we hear during the movies are only the drum during Shinto uh, rituals and there are a lot of silences and when Sarah is dancing she usually dance with the sounds of the element of nature so can you please speak a little bit about this how you thought about um, the music of the movie the silences and the sounds, because this is really beautiful. Um, I mean, after we shot the film, some of the natural music elements that we had was, of, of course, Junya's drum, drum beating, um, as well as I think his, uh, his, his, uh, the, the, the verses that he sang when he is doing the prayer, the Shinto prayer. And uh, I worked with a Japanese composer to create, I think, the music. Uh, for his name is Keita, and um, and we explored a few different instruments. And one of the one of the the instruments that was a little bit more special that he tried was actually a, a Turkish string instrument that has a quite special quality to it. And that instrument was used. I think in both the cave scene and also the last the last scene, and and I requested for him to use drums because uh, I thought that it has a good synergy with uh, Junya hitting the drums, um, and I mean I, I of course maybe just th that the scene that you mentioned uh, where Tomohiro. <laughs> Join, join Sarah in the stretching. Uh, I I think that was just a really what was a was an image that I had. I mean, I I I came up with the scene very very quickly because uh, it was one of our last few days of shoot, and that was the day I was actually falling sick, and and uh, I we I wanted to do something else besides to do a variation of uh, Sarah just stretching because I think that. We need certain moments when the characters have these meeting points with each other to be able to connect the film. So I ask uh, Tomohiro to come in to, you know, this Tomohiro is the the the, the owner of the guest house. So so he come in to do the stretching, and then Junya is to open the door and to find the two of them stretching in there, and then he will just be standing there. So that 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 scene was was kind of created. It was written. It wasn't something that was uh, was. Yeah, I don't think Tomo Hero would do something like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it was just me imagining yeah, or an image that I had, you know, after spending so many days with them. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So the so the music is from J Joe Keita, right? Joe Keita, yes. Who is Japanese, but. Uh from a Korean family, I, I think. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, he's uh, he's, he's uh, Korean, Japanese. But he's he's born and kind of like born in Japan, I think. And, mm -hmm. kind of, uh, and uh, how, how do you know yeah. him? And uh, how did he get involved in this film? 
Um, I knew him because uh, his uh, sister, Keita's sister, was also a film director and producer. Uh, and um, I met the two of them when they came to Singapore to present. There was a small retrospective of his sister's films, the ones that she directed. Uh, so uh, I met the two of them there and that's how I befriended Keita. And yeah, a few years late, I mean, uh, when 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 we were making this document, this this film, uh, Keita wasn't uh, on board immediately. I think that uh, it was after or during the editing stage that I approached. That time I was already living in Japan. I approached uh, Keita uh, to to come on board because I really liked the music that he made for his sister's film. Yeah, and and. Yeah, I I like the, the his sensitivity and his minimalism. I think in the way he uses instrument. Yeah, so yeah, that's how I I invited him. It was the, the second project that we worked together, because at that time I was also uh, uh doing graduate uh doing graduate studies at the Tokyo University of the Arts, and my thesis film was uh scored by Keita too. So after I made that film, uh, he also he went on to score this uh, this film as well, and we con kind of continued our collaboration. Yeah. You know, your film has also a Japanese title, Toku Hanari Takage, I think maybe. Yes. And um, did you think at the Japanese title first or English title first? And uh, can you can you tell us a little bit more about this title? Um. It was suggested by our producer, actually. Because uh, I think we spent a lot of time thinking about the title. I think like, both Sudi and I cracking our heads, but we just couldn't. Uh, and our producer, who was uh, one of the founders of the Cine Movement platform, he, uh, his name is Jeremy, he, he suggested to us. Um... I think it makes a lot of sense, you know, the, the shadow being something that's that's always, you know, stuck to you, but, you know, it's almost, it's almost like a part of your soul and Junya, Junya sort of, you know, being separated, you know, with his, uh, that there's some kind of a separation that happened when he leaves his hometown to travel around the world and spend years uh, working in Thailand and Southeast Asia before the homecoming. And even then, it feels like he's back, but kind of his heart is elsewhere. So I I felt that the title that the producer suggested was an appropriate, I think, metaphor. And and then we 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 found the Japanese we translated the Japanese title to the English title. Yeah. Have you shown your film to a Japanese audience or to to Junior, for example? Mm. Junya has seen the film um, because I think that he was very, there was a lot of anxiety about what. I think he was worried about how, especially some of the more sensitive uh, emotions that he expressed, how he was being edited or handled. So he, he requested to see the film before we locked the picture, which I did show it to him and he was okay, kind of okay with it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think he's he's quite <laughs> quite proud of it actually. In fact, he 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 told me to uh to cast him again in another movie in future, but this time not about him. He said I think he doesn't want the his story to be told. I think he wants to be an actor. <laughs> yeah, um, and so Junya has seen the film. Um, yeah. when I was uh, it's, uh, have you shown the film in the film, Japanese yeah, festivals? I showed the film to. Oh, yeah. Not yet, not yet. We have not uh, had a chance to. It was, uh, I think, Cinema du Rio is, is our second festival. We showed it in Singapore as, as a world premiere. But, uh, I, I mean, I we are still trying to get the film into some Japanese film festivals. We are waiting to hear back from them. But one thing, certainly, I would like to do is to actually bring the film back to Noto, to screen it to the locals. I think that, that was quite important to me. Because there was such an integral, you know, part of the, the movie, whether it's Tomohiro or Rocky or yeah, Junya. So yeah. 
um, when you talk about your film, you, you say documents and then documentary. You, you wanted to say documentary and then you came back and say, no, the film. Does it mean that you you are not really sure of the status of the of this kind of uh, object? I, I know you, you, you like uh, some hybrid objects, right? Which is visual art and films and between films and documentary. Mm -hmm. can, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Mm, I think maybe I, I I I felt that these labels don't because of because of I think certain certain sort of uh, image or preconceptions that people have you know when when we put certain labels on film that uh, that it cannot fully represent the film as it is because maybe maybe stereotypically if I say that it's a documentary people tend to think that. Uh, you know everything they see is real, but I think for me, uh, I mean, there were a lot of recreated scenes in this film. It's there is fiction in it, right? Uh, although for me, I think that uh, the most important thing for when I make the film is not it's really a certain honesty and truth in the intention and in the in the direction of the film. So I I am quite open to using different sort of devices, you know, to, to get to there. Uh, which is why sometimes I hesitate to put a label. I think in the same in the same way that uh, when when Sudi and I first met in the in the Sydney Movement Lab, I think the participants of the lab had a very big trouble or big uh, uh, we, we had a problem with defining what is a dance film. You know, there was a lot of argument. What is a dance film? Is it more cinema or is it more dance? You know, and 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 we spent days, in fact, in the lab, arguing over this. And and in the end, actually, we, we find that this question became not important. Actually, I think that <laughs> you know, we I think it, the film is something that comes or the, or the artwork is something that comes out of this meeting, right, between a a dancer and a, and a filmmaker. So I think I think that is the the context that has been that that creates the work and that label of dance film is it a dance film or not uh, is not so important to us. I I think I say that because uh, you know in a lot of dance or cine dance or dance film festivals in the world, I mean we typically see a lot of uh, more physical expressions you know of dance movements. While in cine movement, we we are quite open in terms of how movement is being interpreted. Sometimes uh, these uh, the participants create films that we don't even really say that it's kind of like a dance, but it's sort of thinking about movement in 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 film, you know, in a different way. So, so which is why I think these labels are sort of for me uh, not the most important thing. Yeah. Sudi, can you tell us a little bit more about your job in this film and uh, how do you feel it now when it's done? Is it a kind of a dense something for you or is it a dance? Uh, is... I think, yeah. yeah. I think what Jie Kai said, I agree. Like, you know, when you come together to make a, like a collaboration for a film, it has to, you have to drop what you, like your, maybe drop your ego, drop whatever you have been used to let it down and then put everything on the table, you make something from scratch. Because it's very difficult, like at, from the our previous um, workshops and our people were like, like trying to define <laughs> things like that. And it's just, it doesn't work. <laughs> so I think what I learned, my take back from this, this whole experience is you come together and then if you have the heart to do it, just put everything we, like, over our, over the, the time we were shooting together, I think we had moments we were like, okay, so what do we do? Like, you know, we, so you, I think you just try to make something different and not fall back to your own comfortable ways. I think maybe at some point all of us were pretty uncomfortable. Like, we're not sure where it was going because, uh, it's, uh, because this film too is the first time I met Sean, the DOP, like, you know, it was just like a gathering, like Jack and I brought everybody together. So it's like we were in this car and then we're just going to do something, but then we don't know what. So I, I thought that was very beautiful. That was my biggest take back. Like you, 
you make something and then you also make you create friendships throughout this period i think the process was more very important i mean sudi mentioned the word discomfort and i actually think that the state of being uncomfortable is quite important <laughs> when we are <laughs> when we are when we are producing i think the most obvious uh, the most obvious example in this film is the weather we actually chose bad weather days to go and film we didn't choose i mean people will stay stay away from bad weather days right? but we are like oh today we heard that it's going to be very weird windy at the beach let's go there and it, we are from the equator really, really, so it's very it was really a because we we thought that you know the elements will help us create the work, you know. So, so I think that this sense of discomfort, this sense of uh, not exactly knowing what you're doing, somehow creates more interesting things. In in some ways, yeah. So. Sure, sure. No, no, no. I think we we feel it. We we feel it like uh, when we watch the film, and at the same time, we I had a strong feeling that it's really written. You know, the how to say the narrative of the film. I know if I can say narrative, but you have some time lapse. You go back and forth, and you're on the boat, and then in the car, and and back in the boat. So it's really written in a way. I mean, I think the writing really came in the editing. I I have to say that my editor. Who is uh, her name is uh, Zhang Yun. She's uh, she's Chinese. She's from Beijing. Um, she re she she wrote the film basically. When I finish, uh, when <laughs> we when we finish the shoot, uh, we 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 don't have a, a structure to assemble. We have all this material, but we don't have any structure. And and the editor spent two years, you know, transcribing all the dialogue because she is uh, she is uh, good in Japanese. <laughs> So she could uh, this film, and uh, she transcribed all the dialogue, and then she, like a jigsaw puzzle, you know, she she found some kind of like a, a thread, you know, a structure, which is you know what I think that what that's what you see in the end. It was very structured and very written. Yeah, because of the editing. Yeah, I think what before what the process we had. We it was very democratic. We we decide like, what we're gonna to do tomorrow. Like we we discuss as a team. So there wasn't like a a very clear like oh this like somebody decide and we yeah we, we work together over that period of time. But we 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 spent the whole time together. We had breakfast, lunch, dinner together. Everything like we we went to the on the onsen together. Like basically the whole time together, so I think we we bonded over everything. Which was a bit difficult for Sarah, right? <laughs> slowly, I think she slowly got used to it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And has Sarah and Junya maybe told you something about the way you you edited uh, the movie, like? Did they tell you about how they want the movie to be, and maybe some images, they some scenes they want, they didn't want to, they wanted to change or something like that. Mm, okay, Sa Sarah has not seen the film. <laughs> uh, yeah. Sarah has not seen the film. Um, she has saw she saw parts of the film because we have to re-record re some some of her dialogue because it was poorly recorded. So we did some ADR. Yeah. Um, um, but but she she had only seen those those scenes. So I I cannot speak for her. Um, but Junya didn't didn't really have any objections towards anything in the film. Uh, besides the he he requested that we we credit his grandfather actually in the film so his grandfather is is in the credits yeah Kamisugi I think really like, it's a Kamisugi right the name yeah. Kamisugi I, yes. I was surprised to see yes. the name so I wonder why yes uh apparently there were only like three families in Japan that has this last name. Yeah, so uh, so it makes it something very special, and this shrine is like a thousand thousand year old family shrine. 
okay, as, as you should, yeah. It, it, not the entire shrine was thousand year old, but Junya was explaining that the only part that was a thousand year old was the, the part where you had the steps going up. And then over the thousand years, they slowly expand the shrine. Yeah. So what we see there in its entirety was maybe, the latest was maybe a few hundred years. Yeah. So. It's, it's old enough, actually. <laughs> um, in the film, you say that, or oh, Junior say that uh, swallows always go back to their nest, right? Yes. And you two are from Singapore. Would you go back to your nest someday? Um, Sudi, you want to answer this question? <laughs> you want to answer it first? <laughs> well, I think someday we will. I, I mean, I will. I don't know if you will. <laughs> but... Yeah, I think when, when I shot the film, I had this very strong feeling of the homecoming feeling as well. Because I've been away from home for like 10 years now. So, um, and I'm, I'm quite close to my family with my, grand, my grandma as well. So when Junya was telling, I mean, before that he was speaking Japanese, I didn't quite get it until later. I was like, oh, I, I resonate with him. The feeling of like, you want to go out to bigger cities, but then you actually also want to like, be home. So I, I had this like torn feeling with. I so I, I really resonate with Junya's emotions in the film. So I think yeah, as a swallow, I will go back to my nest someday. <laughs> yeah, Jekai. Um, I mean, I think that for me as an artist uh, and also a filmmaker, um, I think my roots is quite important to me. I mean, I do see my. I mean, I uh, bachelor's degree in America, and you know when when I finished that was uh, more than a decade ago. When I finished my studies, I almost immediately went back to Singapore because I felt that that I need to. There are works that are that I need to create back at home, and I think till today I still feel the same way. There are certain things that stories I want to tell things that I, that I want to say, you know, about Singapore. And and I think that I would never sort of leave it, even when I'm not there. But yeah, I, I think for me, the reason why I, I mean, right now I'm kind of a half based in Japan. Um, I, I, I think it was, it was also important for me to be able to come out to look at it from a different perspective. But ultimately, I was still kind of like a go back, you know, to, to make the work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this distance also helps me understand that place better. Like I spent the last four months in Singapore. I shot five five films <laughs> there in four months, all short films, and it was a. Uh, I was so much in that, in that zone, you know, in that place that I I really don't cannot dissociate myself. I think with the environment, with the people, with, with Japan. Suddenly, I I look at it very differently and. And I think that distance that I mentioned just now is, is important also for me. Yeah. Mm. And do you think, don't you think that as artists, as a choreographer, as a director, mm -hmm. uh, going back to your nest is maybe one of the hardest things to do? Like, because you were overseas yeah. for years and when you are going back to your roots, when you are going back to Singapore, don't you think that there's something which is more hard to deal with? Maybe culture, traditions, maybe maybe the way uh, your people, Singaporean, uh, see your cinema and your art. Uh, mm -hmm. Besides when you are overseas, maybe there's something which is more easy to do. I mean, I, I don't find it actually hard. In fact, I think that for me, when I whenever I go back to Singapore, I, I, I'm able to go back into that. Because I, I grew I grew up, you know, I spent most of my life there. So I I'm able to get back in there very easily, into the culture, into the even the way I speak changes immediately. My my kind of like my behavior, my my routine, you know, I'm able to kind of assimilate that quite easily because of my familiarity with the place. Um but uh, so in a sense, for me, it's actually the opposite. I think I, I find it harder when I when I when I have to come out 
and and live in a different culture. I think I think being in Japan it's often times very challenging. I think for me, yeah, um, yeah. So I I think that for, that Singapore is always a comfort zone for me, which which also what makes it like like I mentioned earlier, uh, create because you need some level of discomfort. I think mm. to to uh to be able to make uh, make interesting work, yeah. Um. Oh, wow. oh, I, I think I'm a bit on the, on the, on the uh, opposite because uh, when I started dancing, I was already away from um, Singapore. So actually the Singapore dance scene don't know me as well. Some people actually think I'm from Hong Kong. So when I make work in Singapore, it's quite difficult because I don't have a, a team of people when I can just bring it easily. So hmm. that is quite challenging for me and I, I've only have done like one or two productions in Singapore as a dancer choreographer. Mostly I'm still based in Hong Kong. So but the only comfort I get is like family, which is like the comfort zone there. But in terms of work, make, creating new work, I think I understand that we need to be uncomfortable. So I think Hong Kong still makes me feel like I am struggling here. <laughs> And I think that struggle is good. You can't be too comfortable sometimes. Yeah, you need to. Yeah. You need to go Actually, maybe it. just to, just also to mention, you know, after we shot this film, uh, I went back to Singapore with Sarah. We were on the same plane, yeah. and she she tried to to make her first ever dance production in Singapore, and and it was very challenging because for her because she doesn't know anybody. Exactly. She don't know uh, the venues. She she doesn't know how to uh, how to how to as in who to in. She doesn't have a mailing leave of people to invite you know to the to the show. So I mean we I think we helped her a lot in in talking to venues and getting her connected you know with the local scene. But till then, but but even then, it, I I I think it was actually very challenging for her. You know, as a, as an artist, uh, because she's she's been away for so long. You know, nobody <laughs> knew her. Yeah, and people who came for that show are mostly uh, her friends, family that from many from a long time ago. But also there were some. I think there were some critics. You know, that were discovering her for the first time, and I think that was that is a very good thing for her. But uh, today, I think she's still mostly based in Europe. I don't see her coming home anytime soon yeah unfortunately yeah it may be a bit stupid but when i listen to your stories i and i, I listen to junior stories i, I felt like uh, a kind of uh, asian destiny uh, which we are not really aware of uh, in, in europe i mean you both go to you are you are really connected with the other asian people or the other countries uh, uh, asian artists and you are making a kind of culture that maybe you can show your film in Singapore, in Hong Kong, in Japan, and everybody will understand it, uh, it as you want them to understand it. So I, I felt a kind of co community or common destiny, uh, which was very strong for me, at least uh, from my point of view. May I ask a last question no, no, no. To, to Sadi? I've, um, I've, I've heard, uh, I've watched your interview in the uh, Singapore Festival uh, Film Festival, and uh, Sadi said that uh, there is a kind of performative ac aspect in uh, in the ritual when you saw Junior making the prayer. So mm. you yes, and can you explain a little bit more your feeling about that? And uh, because it's very different from what Sarah is okay, doing. Because, yeah, because as a dancer, I'm very used to picking up choreography um, with timing with steps, right? So like. Everything is on count. So when Junior first did the ritual for me, when he showed it to me, I was like, wow. And I was in my head trying to remember like, oh, how many seconds he paused to do this. Like things like that. And walking up the steps, he did right, left, hold, right, left, hold. I was trying to remember that kind of choreography. Like, oh, if you ask me to do it again, I was like, I think I can do it. But then no. After that, when I realized it, it was just so, he was embodying it. It wasn't something that like 
I can just step in. Okay, let me do it now. So I feel like this was something that Junior had in him and only he could perform that. Like as a, even as a performer, as a dancer, I don't think Sarah and I, if we were asked, to, if Jack, I wanted us to do that, <laughs> I don't think that would have worked out. So, so I was very intrigued by how Junior's stance, the way he was so grounded, he was not, he was not like a performer, but when he wore the robe, he transformed. So to me, that was very beautiful when he showed us when he did the shoot. He he just transformed. He wasn't that like little junior. <laughs> we we know like. So I thought that was very um, beautiful that moment that he actually just was from like a city boy. I mean not city boy like a, a regular with his home like regular clothes, and then he just transformed to a young Shinto priest. Yeah, to me that was yeah very beautiful. <laughs> And the sound of his drums and his voice. Yeah, when he first, the first time he did it, I had goosebumps. I was not sure, was it, was this shrine? Or it was like, it, it was just the whole place. It was just like, yeah. Even now talking about it, I'm like, yeah, I'm feeling it again. Like the very first time when he said his prayer, it was beautiful. It was so good. Yeah, thank you. But don't you think that uh, in the coffee shop, the way the man is pouring the coffee is also a kind of choreographic uh, dance. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So it, that wasn't that wasn't his plan. He was doing his thing. So that's why um, with Sarah, we we didn't have a lot. We didn't have actually. We didn't set any choreography with her. Everything was just um, by her impulse, just go. Mm. Yeah. But also, I think that uh, Sarah was using a lot of uh, existing uh, language from her own dance yes, practice. Okay. Like when she was uh, shaking her hands like this, when touching a ceiling, that is, uh, I think these gest tiny gestures were something that I also see in her past works that she, she utilized again. Yeah, yeah. so definitely a, a strong part of her dance practices in that improvisation. Yeah. yeah. And has Sarah seen the same uh, ritual as you did? And maybe she felt the same spirituality coming out uh, from Junia's, Junia's uh, ritual? Or didn't she saw that? She saw it. She was there. She was present at the point too. Yeah. We, we were just very, very honored that he actually performed it again. <laughs> in the full Shinto um, uniform, like a costume. Yeah, I mean, I didn't hear much, <laughs> very specific comments from Junya about, about the ritual. Also, I also felt that there is a certain sense of alienation, you know, that, that she is interested, but, but there is also some kind of a cultural barrier that, that is stopping her from being totally, I think, completely connected with it. Yeah. Thank you so much. It was very interesting to to hear you. And uh, yeah, I, I need to watch the film again now that I know all you, you said. <laughs> yeah. So, will you use Japan? Um, Sudi and uh, Jiekai, will you do something again in Japan? Or have you planned something? I mean, I, I'm staying in Japan to work, so I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I would continue making films here. And if there's the opportunity to work with Sudi again, definitely we'll try to do it. We, we haven't had anything planned yet, so we'll, we'll kind of wait, wait and see. Yeah. I've almost finished my questions, Juliette. I don't know if you want to ask other things. Me too, it's good. Okay, well, thank you so much for all your kind uh, and, and your smiles. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> to see you. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much again for this great opportunity. No, thank you for inviting us. Thank yeah. You. yeah, thank you for having us. <laughs>